Now, number one, I'd just like to first of all say that gambling addiction uh, is a situation where you go into a bookmaker's or a casino and you go in there and you don't realize it, but in your mind, you see everybody else losing and it's going to be different for you. You're going to be the one that's different. Even though everybody else is losing, you're the guy that's going to be winning. Now, number one, this is an illusion and a fantasy. Now, I can tell you something straight right now, that you cannot win money gambling. Uh, the longer you do it, the more you do it, the more you lose. You will get wins, okay? You, you win money, but all you do, if you've got a gambling addiction, is continue gambling, and the longer you gamble, the more you'll give back, and then you'll start going into your savings uh, using your own money, and you continue on until you've got nothing left. If you go on and on and on gambling, um, you will lose all your money. Now, that is just a plain, simple fact that you can take as reality. Um, it, it's not going to be different for you because you happen to be whoever you, it is you are. The same rules will apply to you as it applies for everybody else. Nobody wins gambling long term. Nobody, you know takes money off the bookmaker and keeps it. So the the addiction the addiction becomes more than winning money. It's not the winning of the money that's important, it's the actual gamble. You go in there and you get a buzz out of the actual gamble. You may not realise that. You may think you're gambling for the money, but you're not. Okay, I'm telling you. You're gambling because of the buzz and the urge that it gives you. And when you go into a bookies and whatever problems you've got in your life, the, everything disappears because you're concentrating on the results, you're concentrating on the race, the excitement of the race and the gamble and the buzz of it all. And it, it, it does, it, it puts you into like a, a, a world where everything is like okay, there, there's no problems. But once you've lost your money and you come out, uh, those problems that you escaped for an afternoon from, uh, they're still there, and all you've done is lost your money. So, uh, it hasn't solved anything, it's just made everything worse, really. Okay, so you, you don't you don't gain anything by, by doing it. It's an illusion, it's a fantasy. Okay, gambling is a fantasy. And you've got guys uh, sitting in there, you got some guys that go in there every day, and they sit there hour after hour, and all they're doing is wishing their life away on nothing. Okay, because it, it don't matter who who's in there; they're in there because um, a gambling a guy with gambling addiction is in there because he's he's just addicted, and that's it. So that's the important thing. Now, the 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 main thing is how to beat it. Is number one, you've got to realize you can't win, and you can see the destruction that it's doing to your life. And you've got to come out of there. And it's no good you turn around saying, oh, well, I won't do that again because you'll do it again. So the only way you're going to beat it is to beat that addiction. And the way you do it is simply this. Now, now this works, but you've got to want it to work. I mean, that's the golden rule. You've got to really want to give it up. And none of this stuff where you're you're sitting there and you're thinking, well... I want to beat it, but subconsciously you don't really want to beat it. You know, what's happened is you're pissed off because you've lost a lot of money and you're really angry with yourself for doing it again. Okay, basically that's what you are. You're angry with yourself for being so damn stupid to go in there and continue on. You, you know, but the next day or a few days later when you get over it, you get the urge and you think, oh, well, I'll go back in there and I'll get, I'll get some of that I've lost back. If I can just get some of it I lost back, I'll be okay. So even if you go in there and that happens and you feel better, you feel better about it, so you go in and you gamble again, and then you lose. As I say, the longer you go on, the, the more you lose, okay? You, you just continue losing. So anyways, now the important thing is, the way you beat it is simply this. You get something else, whatever it is, in your life and you you mark it in your head 
And every time you get that urge to gamble, you don't gamble. You do the other thing that you've bookmarked, if you like, in your head, that you're going to do that instead of the gamble. Now that's important because it does work. Okay, I promise you it works. But you've got to want it to work. And you mustn't allow that gambling urge, that buzz, to override that determination of yours to want to quit. And to also override that thing, whatever it is you've got, a hobby or if it's just going out for a walk or playing music or going to watch a, in the cinema in a movie or whatever it is that you pick out to do instead of the gamble, you mustn't allow that gambling urge to overcome that thing that you've picked out to do instead of the gamble. And every single time you get that urge to gamble, you do that other thing, but you do it. You don't actually give in to the gambling urge, you do it. Okay? Now, that it, it does work if you want it to work. But if subconsciously you're weak and you haven't got the guts and the strength to beat your addiction or the conviction to beat your addiction, then you'll go back to it. You keep returning to it. But if you hold firm, you stand firm, convicted and determined, you will stop gambling this way. And remember the golden rule. You can't win, and it's not really the gambling for money that you're going in there for. It is that addiction that has got you that you're going in there. You're feeding that addiction. You know, the money is secondary. You're just feeding that urge, that addiction, that buzz, that force that drives you in there to say, okay, I'm going to have another gamble today. I'm going to, I'm going to win today. I'm going to get in there now. I'm going to, whoa, you know, I, I'm going to, you don't win. It's it's just leading you along. Uh, the the only thing the only other thing I will say before I you know just sign off is um, if you gamble on the lottery within reason, uh, at least then if you win first or second prize, you're winning big bucks. I mean you get millions, right? Or you get hundreds of thousands of pounds. But as long as you keep that flutter on the lottery. Say, I don't know, whatever you can afford within whatever your budget is, whatever you can afford to lose and it not matter, say a tenner a week even, or something like that. On the lottery, it's better to gamble on that because it's not as addictive. And if you if you win, the odds are against you doing it because it's millions to one even then. Um, you, you win something worthwhile. That if you continue doing the lottery, you're not going to put it all back on. You're not going to lose your house. And if you keep it under a certain level, if you do win on the lottery, you're winning a lot of money. Whereas in the bookies, if you go in, you put £100 on a horse and he's at 10 or 20 to 1. All you're doing is winning maybe a 1000 or £2,000, which you can gamble back easily all in one afternoon. Okay, so all I'm saying is, is that I, I promise you this will work if you're strong enough to be able to do it. OK, uh, but I, I'm telling you now, if you continue gambling, you'll ruin your life. Now, I'm telling you, you'll ruin it. You'll go further and further down. You'll just go on that down later and you'll end up in the pits, man. You'll end up in the pits. And once the money's gone, it's gone. You can't get it back. You ruin your life. Nobody's going to come up and say, hey, you made a mistake. Here you are. Here's everything back you lost. It's not going to happen. Once it's gone, it's gone. You've ruined your life. And then you're really in a mix. You're, you're in a fix, man. And there's no way you can get out of it. So repeat this video over and over and over again. As many times as you have to. Listen to what I've told you. Listen. Because it's the truth. And you'll ruin your life. Okay? So now I've told you. Now it's up to you. There's no going back once it's happened. So listen to me. And do what I say. And, you know, post your reactions if you find it's working or, or whatever goes on. And, uh, you know, I, I just wish you the best of luck.
because there's nothing worse than a destroyed gambler, man. It guts you. It, it, it guts you completely. It ruins your life. It's horrible. It's one of the worst things ever. So just get off of it, okay? Now watch all of this film because it is important. Gambling is America's number one money-making business with an estimated profit of an incredible six billion dollars. Even more startling is the fact that these profits exceed those of the 100 largest manufacturing concerns in the United States. This huge gambling industry fairly outside the law and is largely controlled by the syndicate, the American branch of the international mafia. The odds or percentage in favor of the operator of any gambling game or device keeps him in business. Where the percentage is small, many operators will resort to cheating to increase their take. The odds against the player in an honest 21 game are only 2%, yet a clever dealer can give himself a winning hand any time he so desires. They are as adept at reading the backs of marked cards as an average person would be holding the deck face up. Retaining the cards they want for themselves, they deal seconds to the players. Card markings are not easy to distinguish. On this type of deck, the markings appear on the upper and lower points of the top left-hand diamonds. The marks for ace through jack are placed on the top diamond. This is the mark for an ace. The ten through seven appears on the second diamond. This indicates a 10. The 6 through 3 are on the third diamond. This mark is for a 5. 2's are unmarked. This type of deck is also widely used. The marking consists of breaks in the scroll pattern in the upper left-hand corners. There are many dealers who prefer marking cards in their own way, using invisible inks and special contact lenses to read them. When dealing seconds, the top card is momentarily slid back and the next card is dealt. Cards can just as readily be dealt from the bottom or middle of the deck. The dealer can thus change the odds in his favor from 2% to 100% if he so desires. A sharp dealer can do almost as well with an unmarked deck by peeking at the next card. Raising the deck vertically, he exposes the top card. This is done in a fraction of a second and is not detectable by the player because of the position of the cards. The dealer can also peek by moving the deck toward the player and exposing the top card for an instant by sliding it up over the heel of his hand. Another method of peeking is with a small mirror concealed in the hand and held in place by an adhesive or a ring. This type of peeking is used primarily in poker or bridge games, where a knowledge of what cards the dealer's opponents are holding is important. Gambling houses employ only a small part of all professional gamblers. Thousands of them operate while traveling from place to place, a train, a hotel, or wherever a friendly game can be played gives them an opportunity to use the cultivated dexterity of their hands. A card sharp will use every trick at his disposal to fleece his victims. With marked decks, peeking, dealing seconds and palming, the honest player has no chance at all. In a crap game, the odds are always against the shooter or holder of the dice. On a professional table, there are many combinations that a player may bet on. The average of all these against the player is 6 to 5, or 20%. To make sure a player will lose, the dice croupier, instead of pushing the dice back with his stick, will draw them to him and then toss them back. In so doing, he substitutes dice that will cause the shooter to lose. 
Watch the reflection of the hand as the palmed dice are released and the other dice are in turn palmed. Dice for cheating are called shapes, flats, and loads and are fixed certain numbers to appear more often than normally. These have only three numbers and in combination would roll only odd numbers, doubling the number of sevens possible with honest dice. Roulette is a comparatively small percentage game when played honestly. Cheating is accomplished by dividing the wheel into from four to six magnetized sections. If heavy betting is being made on certain numbers, the magnets will be turned on in sections not containing these numbers. Normally, when the ball drops into the wheel, it will bounce through several numbers before it comes to rest. However, if the magnets are on, it will stop dead hits. Nothing much need be said about slot machines, except that they are mechanical and can be regulated to pay out precisely what the owner wants it to, from as little as 10% to as much as 90%. More money is bet on horse racing than on any other form of commercialized gambling. It is estimated that another three is bet illegally through some 60,000 bookmakers operating in the United States. Horse racing is not a game of pure chance. Past performance sheets are a puzzle in the mathematics of furlongs, fractional time, weights, and track conditions. The horse player is exposed to a mass of conflicting and, generally speaking, worthless information. There are innumerable tip sheets, furnishing selections, countless tipping services and fraudulent touting bureaus, all purporting to be infallible. There is also a wide divergence of opinion amongst the handicappers of them will they agree on the same horse. This difference of opinion is necessary for the successful operation of a race meet. If all money were bet on the same horse, there could be no payoff on the winner. All money wagered is instantly recorded in a huge computing machine called a totalizator. Before any money is paid out, the track deducts its own and the state's percentage, which amounts to about 15%. No matter whether you bet with a bookie, the 15% plus odds will sooner or later break you. You can beat a race, but not the races. Lotteries, although illegal, are widely played. The most popular, the Irish sweepstakes, returns less than one-fifth of the money in prizes. There are also over 300,000 counterfeit tickets sold each year. The Chinese lottery, also known as Kino, can hardly be classified as gambling, so great are the odds against the player. The operator is protected by better than a 90% margin. The numbers game is also a lottery. To wager, the player writes down a sequence of any three numbers and gives it, together with his money, to a collector for the game. The odds against any one number winning is 1,000 to 1, but the payoff never exceeds 600 to 1. Remember, when you bet on any commercial gambling games, you are not getting an even break because of the percentages against you. The odds can also be greatly altered by cheating. However, some gambling interests, such as horse racing, are satisfied with normal percentages and try to maintain an honest operation. They realize that to keep a better coming back for more, he must win occasionally. The annual gambling gross is $30 billion, of which $6 billion is profit. This means that the average better loses 20% of all money he wagers. We all like to take a chance or gamble occasionally, and betting a few dollars just for the fun of it may be all right, but betting to make money is downright foolish. <laughs>